Hey folks, hey, Roland Martin here. Hey, I'm sneaking up right now on a bass. I'm gonna see if I can't catch him. But I'm gonna show you something today, hopefully show you a way to catch twice as many bass as you've been catching. And that's to master the fluke technique. I'm gonna show you how to do it. First, I'm gonna see if I can't catch this bass. So take this spinning rod, come around the corner. I think there's a bass right here. I'll make a little short cast right there. See what happens. Okay. Watch the line. Be a line watcher. Be a line watcher. See if he bites it. Come on, bass. Hit that thing. I know you're there. This is my own backyard. I kind of know where the fish are. But this, people do fish here, so some, I might not catch that bass. Well, daggone it, that's the fluke deal. Kind of like, it's look little, you think I'm fishing a Cinco, but I'm not, I'm fishing another lure. Okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go to the end of the dock. I'm gonna go a little farther out. He, that, that my pet bass wasn't there. See if he's on the end of this dock. Go right there, come off the end of the dock. Pull it just a little teeny bit. Watch the line, watch the line. Be a line watcher, just like I'm Cinco fishing. You think I'm Cinco fishing, but I'm not. It's quite a bit of difference between flukes and Cinco's, and I'm gonna explain that here in this video. If I can catch this fish first, I'm gonna to try to catch it. It's in a very good place to fish, but, but at least it, I, this pet bass often hits, and he's not cooperating right. <laughs> but anyway, I can still tell you all about how to, how to properly catch twice as many bass on a fluke than you've probably been catching. And so that's, that's what my message is today, how to properly fish the fluke. Well, first of all, my little pet bass didn't bite. Okay, but let, first of all, let me just show you what this fluke is. Well, first of all, I have a six and a half foot favorite spinning rod. This is a medium action rod, and it's a size 2,500 reel. Now, on this reel, it's kind of important to know, this is 20 pound braid. Now, 20 pound braid is got a couple things. It sets the hook better, number one, and it it uh, it's 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 very little stretch to it. In other words, once you set the hook, it's just really really a good hook set. Therefore, it's more sensitive. And why I'm using the braid is another reason. It casts farther, so I can use 20 pound braid. I can throw it a long, 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 long ways, all the way across the canal. So that's one thing. And with the sensitivity it has. And the fact that it sets the hook even at a long distance, now I'm making a more powerful rod and reel out of this relatively small spinning rod. Okay, so let's get let's get started. Let's talk about the rest of the complement because this is a way to catch twice as many fish as ever before. Okay, this isn't a regular Cinco deal. You see me sinking, uh, talking about the Cinco and the Cinco is the number one lure, but this can also be a tremendous asset to your repertoire of lures. Okay. This is a standard fluke. Now, there's a couple different types of flukes, and there are different things like the D-Shad. That's another one that I use, and that's a, that's a one by Yamamoto. It's just about the same thing as a fluke. But let's just talk, let's just call them a fluke for right now. And what is this? Okay, let's, let's look at this. It's a little bit different hook. That's the first thing. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take it out of its regular deal, and I'm going to show you how much different it is than, say, a Cinco. Okay. First of all, I've tied a, 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 a double uni knot right there on this 20 pound line. And I'm coming in, in this case, it's 12 pound test fluorocarbon. I've done the 12 pound test fluorocarbon. And a fluorocarbon is really, really a, a good line because it has a little less stretch than the monofilament. And also the fluorocarbon is much, much more invisible in the water. It has, actually sinks a little bit more than monofilament. But it's a great uh, line for setting the hook and it's a 12 pound, it's just a perfect complement for the spinner rod. Okay, now look at that, look at my loop knot. Now I've shown you a whole variety of knots in other times, and I show you this loop knot. The loop knot's a very important entity here because it lets that hook kind of just swivel and bob all around. Okay, now, that's a, that's a regular loop knot. You see me tie that. Now this isn't just the regular EWG uh, three or four odd hook. This is a different hook. This is a completely different hook. See, see how it's, it has a, uh, I guess they call it a round bend uh, off offset. It's an offset uh, round bend hook, and it's, this happens to be a, a three aught size hook. Okay, now let's take the fluke and let's rig it up, and I'll show you how this loop knot plays into in the, the, the game. First of all, I'm going to lay the hook right here 
to low, see how it's going to end up being. Let's get to end up being right in that little area there. So I'm going to come in the top here about just about a quarter of an inch and come down and out just a little ways and run that hook on the shoulder of that hook. Run that, that worm up on the shoulder. Now you see that the line's all real loose there. It's a real loose floppity uh, uh, loop knot now. Now I can take and take the hook and lay it up here and get it just so it comes through the back and lays on the back. See that? See it's laying on the back. It's just through there but it's laying on the back. You can't even see that hook hardly. The hook is just almost invisible. But what you can see is the fact that that loop knot just swivels around every which way. Now let's look, look at it in the water. Let's see what we have. In a nice little spot and let me just drop it in the water right here and like this, okay? See how low, slowly it sinks? But see how it darts around? With that loop knot, it just goes, it just goes, it looks like a dying shad. It looks like a dying fish. And it just, it just goes, it's just so, it's so good when it's, when it's doing that. It's just, you kind of twitch it along. No weight to it. This is no weight. Now it has natural weight. It sinks by itself. And I'm going to put a white one on and just to show you that the D shad does the same thing. And you might be able to see the D shad a little bit better. Watch, watch this, watch this action. It's a little bit about the same, but you can see it better. You can see that? It just goes all over the place. I'm telling you, when this, when you make a long cast and you, and you start working it back in just little twitches, there's a couple ways to do it. In the spawning season, if you know where, about where they're spawning, I'll throw it out and just kill it and let it sink all by itself and just let it lay there. That's one way. But in this fall, when their fish are chasing shad, it's basically a shad-like lure. And so I'm going to take this little, particularly the white one, in the fall and just kind of just jerk it along. And what I'll do is I'll look for hydrilla patches, and I'll look for edges, and I'll look for shady areas, okay? And I'll make a nice long cast. So watch how long it casts. It casts just tremendous ways, okay? Tremendous ways. I often hold my rod up just because I like to, and sometimes I'll just kind of just jerk it along like this. Sometimes I'll stop, then I'll just jerk it along. And they hit it. It's, it's like a Cinco bite, okay? I mean, when you feel the tap, remember it's hot summertime. When you feel the bite, you want to set the hook within about three seconds or they're going to swallow it and it's going to be a bad deal for the bass. So what I'm going to do, I, I, that's why I have braid. I can feel the strike quick and fast. When I feel the strike, I lower the rod just a little ways and bam, set the hook, much out like I would on a worm. Now, let me just show you a Cinco in comparison. And you might think, well, he's doing nothing but fishing a Cinco. Now, that's a lot of difference here. Let me just show you the Cinco deal. The Cinco deal, unweighted Cinco, I'm going to take a regular cast and reel, and this happens to be 17 pound test monofilament on here. And uh, let me just take a, a regular Cinco on a regular uh, 4 aught EWG hook like I always fish. And that's a, that's a, uh, uh, a green, that's a, that's a watermelon flake, red flake, okay? Come through the head about 3 eighths of an inch like I've always done. Got to pull around, bury the, bury the head and the hook, okay? And the hook and the head of the worm, get it all straight, now it's ready to go. But it has a different action in the sink. The, the Cinco is a different lure. It's a different action than the fluke. And look, look at this now. Okay, now I'm gonna just show it out there. It's no weight. It just, it kind of goes down flat. In other words, it's not zooming around from side to side. If you could see it, it's just a flat sink. It just it just lays flat, and it's it's it sinks in the clear water. It just sinks almost just horizontal. It, it's just a horizontal sink, and it sinks. It, it's kind of hard to see, and it, I'm going to do it again. Maybe you can see how it's sinking. I'll do it right here. It just sinks right straight down. The water's all dingy. It's hard to see, but. And, and with the Cinco, you're doing about the same thing. You're throwing it out there. I'm throwing it a high rod. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a line watcher, and I'm kind of twitching along the same way. But the action's different. It's not the same lure. It, it, the, the fluke looks like a dying shad. I don't know what the Cinco looks like. Of course, I know, and you'll have to say, the Cinco's the number one lure of all times, and it catches the most fish of anything. And you need to master the Cinco. That's the first thing you need to do. But as a second step, 
and as a way to catch twice as many more bass, master that fluke because the fluke is a, such a cool deal. Now I can add weight to it. I can add weight, but once I started adding weight, just like the most effective way to fish a Cinco, I would not recommend fishing a fluke with weight. I would recommend using a 12 pound test fluorocarbon, a 20 pound test line like I showed you, that good loop knot, that loop knot, and, it, and again, it allows you to twitch that thing along and it just, it comes just jumping around. It's just, it's such a, it's such an enticing lure. The, the, the Cinco does not do that. And that fish really sometimes really get after it. And you can skip this over the grass beds. You can skip it through the lily pads. You can, and another thing you can do, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get out on this dock and I'm gonna show you something. There's actually a dock underwater. It's flooded right now because we've had some rain. <laughs> no, I don't walk on water. <laughs> I've never been able to walk on water. <laughs> but what I can do with this, with this fluke that you can't do with hardly anything else, watch how it skips. Now, just pretend there's an overhanging willow out there. Watch it skips. It skips right out there. I'm gonna, let me, okay, watch this again. It skips so well. It just skip, 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 skip. Now, I can come out to the end of this dock and I can skip it underneath these bushes. Oh, son, shoo, look at that. Skipped it right there. I can skip it right over here on this side. I can skip it. Woo, it's way back underneath the bushes. That's a perfect spot. You can do that with an unweighted worm as well, but with a fluke, you can really do it well. You can really, really skip like crazy. You can skip it better than anything else. It's the best skipping bait I know of, a fluke. And you can come to the bushes like this and skip it way back in there. I'm way back in there, 10 feet, way back in those little bushes back there. Okay, we'll work it back out. It's just a fantastic lure. Again, a fluke can be just a killer deal. Now why I say it, it's a, it can double your catches, I've been on, uh, on a particularly spawning flats at Lake Okeechobee a couple different times. And when they get on a fluke, I don't know what it is. I know the Cinco's a good deal and I catch most of my fish on Cinco's, but sometimes they'll get on a fluke bite. And when they get on a fluke bite, nothing compares to it. I've seen, I've seen just time and time again where, this, where the fluke will just, will just catch fish, cast after cast after cast. And one big giant BASS tournament that I fished, I came in, uh, well, I led it the first day with 22 pounds, and uh, that was all a fluke bite. Every bit, of, every single fish was fluke. And then this, the next day was windy and cold, and I fell down a little bit. I think I came in fourth in the tournament. But the point was, I led the tournament the first day on a fluke, on a spinning rod, just exactly like this. 20 pound test line, 12 pound test leader, a three aught uh, hook, like I showed you, and and that. In fact, I used the 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 uh, regular. And this is the, probably the most popular color in South Florida is the watermelon red. And that's really, really a good deal. Watermelon red here in, in Florida is just a killer. And they, also Yamamoto has a watermelon red. I use their, their D shad. And again, I, I say that the D shad just a little bit heavier and cast just a little bit better, but it's basically the same, it's, it's, it does the same thing. But with the addition of that loop knot, it makes it a whole different ball game. It comes flying back and forth every which way. And then with the ability to be able to skip it under the bushes, oh, son, it's just a killer deal. So anyway, you can catch more fish on a fluke than you can probably anything else. When it's right, it's right. It's just fantastically right. You can really, really get them. So master the fluke, master the fluke. You'll catch twice as many bass. Hey, thanks for watching my YouTube. It's really fun kind of instructing a, a few of my little techniques and tricks. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's funny, the, 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 that's, that's the, my whole deal, is just being a, being a teacher of some sort. I've, I've taught rifle training in the military. I taught high school and I taught algebra and I taught general science, I taught a lot of stuff. But I could teach fishing. And that's the thing, when I take my people out that I, I fish with, and particularly the young kids, I try to teach them something. That's just passing it on is just a big part of my, my repertoire of, of trying to do the right thing. Anyway, the right thing to do right now, master the fluke. We'll see you again soon, and thanks for subscribing.